Hello, this is Rory with the Love Chat, and today's topic is My Ex Reached Out. Now, this is video number 34. If you have a question you would like for me to consider featuring on the channel, please write it in a comment below, and if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe and hit like. Now then, my ex reached out. So, I was going through my emails, and one came in, and it is a success story, which typically I don't like to share because I don't want it to discourage others, but I think that you guys are going to find this one to be very helpful, so let's jump right in. It says, Hi Rory, Sam here, I changed his name. I'm a huge fan of your channel and have been listening almost every day since I found this channel. This is gold. I wanted to write you and get your help on a situation that I'm having. Uh, okay, so first off, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. My ex and I have been broken up for about four months now. We were together for two and a half years, and I went through the typical begging and pleading until I found your and Corey Wayne's work and cut her off cold turkey. Well, that's good. That's a really hard thing to do, and sometimes doing the right thing and doing the easy thing aren't the same. And so, is going no contact easy? No way in hell is it easy. Is it the right thing to do? You bet. I'll be honest, those were the hardest four months of my life. I hadn't realized how attached to her I'd become, and I forgot what it was like to stand on my own two feet without her. You know, I think that he's hit on something really important here, which is... When we're in a relationship, we forget to maintain our sense of individuality. The relationship is no longer person A and person B, but rather it turns into this weird symbiotic person AB. And so it's really important to remember that you're your own person. You have your own friends, you have your own interests, you have your own likes, and not everything you do needs to mesh with this person that you're dating. Because what happens when you guys break up? Well, I mean, you feel like half a person. But not only that, it's a matter of keeping your individuality as a means of having other things going on in your life. If you count on your ex for everything, then of course they're going to feel trapped and smothered. You don't have anything else going on. And what happens when they want to go out for a night with the girls or a night with the guys or to do something that doesn't involve you? You're going to sit there being like, oh man, I really wanted to hang out with this person. And you're going to be showing anxious, needy behavior. So it's important to have other things going on in your life, even during a completely successful relationship. It goes on to say, I never in a million years thought I would ever hear from her again until she reached out to me this past Tuesday. My jaw hit the floor and my heart stopped beating for a solid two seconds. <laughs> yeah, I bet you were, weren't expecting that one. You have to understand... My ex is one of the most stubborn people you'll ever meet, and I cannot believe she caved in and called me. Weird. Your ex was stubborn? You never thought she would call you, and she did? How weird. She told me that she was missing our conversations, so I quickly took the hint, and I asked her to meet up in the evening for a coffee so that we could talk in person. I didn't mention it being a date or anything. I simply said that we always had the best conversations in person, so let's meet up. And then I proceeded to get off the phone. Good for you. That's applying Corey Wayne's advice. Set a date. Get off the phone. Good for you. That's the, probably the best thing you could have done. You don't want to talk your ex out of meeting up with you. She caved in. Now's the time to set the date. And as Corey Wayne says, when you hear from your ex, you assume it's because they want to see you. And then you set a definite date. That was very nice work. I set a time and place. And now we're going to meet up this Wednesday. I'm really nervous. What should I do and how should I act when I see her? I'm grateful for any help you can give here, and thank you for your channel. You've helped me so much. Sam. All right, Sam. Well, first off, you followed the playbook and you got the results. So good for you. Now, as far as meeting up with your ex, you want to treat it like you're attracting somebody new. You treat this person as if they are uh, a brand new person in your life, and basically, you treat them accordingly. You want to be charming funny, not trying too hard, and being authentic because she will smell it on you the second you're being someone other than yourself. People just know, and they probably don't even know uh, on a conscious level. They, they probably just feel like you're not being authentic with them, and that's a turnoff. And so don't try. You just show up, be yourself, crack a couple of jokes. If you agree with her, then agree. If you disagree with her, then disagree. But at the end of the day, it should be lighthearted and fun. There really shouldn't be many topics where you guys aren't jiving on. 
right? And you have the benefit of knowing this person for two and a half years. And so you already have a bit of an emotional bond built up. Now, a lot of the tactics that you find on the internet are, oh, we'll call up old memories that, you know, will get them thinking of the good times. And typically, we don't see that so much in behavior analysis. Um, they kind of are aware what you're trying to do. And so there's no need for that. You don't need to call up that one great time you had on the, the Ferris wheel in summer. And frankly, like I was saying, they're going to pick up on the fact that you're trying to manipulate their feelings in a certain way. So I wouldn't try. What I would do is show up and be who you are, have a fun time, talk about fun topics, fill them in on what's been going on in your life, and just smile, be positive, and do not talk about the breakup. Do not talk about the relationship. Don't talk about getting back together. Your job right now is to go out and have a good time and ideally conclude the night with sex if it's possible. But ultimately, you want her or him or whoever it is having a good time with you and smiling, laughing, but always acting like you are their lover and not their friend. Don't friend zone yourself if they try and bring up any of this friendship talk. You stood your ground the first time by telling them that's not what you wanted. So make sure and be ready to walk if you need to. But ultimately, if she's reaching out to you in this way, I think reconciliation is most likely on her mind. And so just remember to go into this situation unattached and simply setting up the expectation of having a good time. That's it. And if you play it cool and be who you are and have a good time and smile and laugh, I have a strong feeling the night is going to go how you want it to go. That's all I had for today. If you found my video helpful, I'd be very grateful if you'd subscribe and hit like. Please leave a comment below and tell me what topics you would like covered in the future. Also, if you'd like to do a Skype or email coaching, please reach out to me at thelovechat at gmail.com or thelovechat.net slash coaching. Until next time.